So where we're going to go to in this video, um, the first place we visit is just outside Holyhead and it's the Timor Standing Stone which is very close to Trefignath Burial Chamber which we looked at in a previous video. This yellow dotted road is actually a service road for uh, a new industrial development that's uh, ongoing. It's uh, it's taking a while to uh, to complete. There are a couple of units on it, but uh, it's been put in as a service road for the industrial development. Um, I'm sure that this location where the standing stone is, is is a protected site, so it's not going to be developed, but it is going to be. Uh, enclosed really by the uh, by the modern development the the a55 expressway is there and the railway line is there and you'll see in the background of the video this uh, area here which is a, a big uh, Morrison supermarket um, we're going to also visit uh, three standing stones which are quite remote they're close to the village of Lanfeckel and you can see them on the map it says standing stones just there um, so I had a walk from the village up this footpath to the standing stones which sit on um, a crossroads of footpaths at the moment whether they are ancient trackways uh, or it was an ancient route and the standing stones were um, relevant to, to to that uh, as a as a crossroads for for routes across the area, I don't know. It's not written anywhere that uh, that that's the case, but it just makes you wonder that they're right on the crossroads of those two paths. Uh, and Landfeckel is about uh, two miles from Camus, and Camus has the distinction of being the most northerly village in Wales. Now, I need to apologise for something I say on the commentary about these standing stones. I actually state that this site is uh, the only place on Anglesey where there is more than one standing stone in one location. Um, it, it's not actually the case because we looked at the uh, standing stones at Penrose Filey uh, in a previous video, which is a pair of stones. But this is the only place on Anglesey where there are three stones. I'm on the edge of Hollyhead on a new industrial estate and it's a rather improbable site for a prehistoric monument but nevertheless that's what's here and it's Timor Standing Stone and that's the uh, sign for it the panel that explains its history I don't suppose a lot's known about it. It's early Bronze Age. It doesn't say whether there's been any burials found in this particular one. We're not far from Trefignath burial chamber, which we looked at previously. And that's uh, just on the skyline. You can't actually see the site of the chamber, but uh, just in front of those trees on the skyline. So this is Timor Standing Stone, which is gradually being swallowed up by development, unfortunately. runs in front of the supermarket as does the railway line so 
so it's uh, a very ancient stone in the mid in the middle of modern development it's about uh, two and a half meters high I think it said uh, there's a bit of a hollow around its base and some some packing stones around its base but uh, at one time it would have been probably a significant site now it's got modern lorries going <laughs> past it probably connected with the uh, the ferry with the lorry park being there well, that's Timor standing stone survey map because I've gone off-road a little bit and I'm near the village of Lanfeckel which is just inland from Camus Bay it's about a mile, mile and a half from Camus and the reason I'm here is I want to go and have a look at a group of standing stones which you may be able to see behind me on the horizon on the skyline and that's a group of three standing stones so uh, I'm just going to have a walk up there and uh, have a bit of a closer look at them. We just need to go into this dip and then up the other side. There's quite a few ancient monuments in this area, uh, but I've not been able to really find much out about them. They don't appear to be in any of the books that I've got. Uh, there's a burial chamber also Which we might be able to see from the standing stones. I'm not sure but looking at the map the contours look as though um, There's another valley the other side of that hill uh, And then across the other side of that valley There's another hill with a burial chamber But we've had a drive past on the road and there is actually a farm complex on on the summit of that hill so I don't think there'll be anything to see really because it's uh, it's all farm buildings. I think we'll take the easy option and go through the gate. Some of these stars are a bit difficult. That's it. Yeah. These step styles can be a bit uh, dodgy. I see we've got some sheep, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I'm looking back at the village now, which is behind those modern bungalows in the dip. And uh, straight away you can see why this site was chosen to build these three stones and it's not a true circle there are three stones and it forms like a triangle but it's certainly on the top of this hill and the burial chamber is beyond where that farm is I don't think there'll be anything left of the burial chamber by the look of the extensive range of buildings that are on there. But fortunately the standing stones have remained unspoiled. They're not very high, they're about two meters high. And um, you can see at the base where packing stones have been put in to keep them uh, upright 
on these two. That's quite a flat, like wing shaped stone that is. And this one's got a little bit more width to it. And there's some packing stones just at the bottom there. But naturally it's covered in lichen. It's a fairly exposed location. I'm sure the wind's whistling in the microphone as I'm speaking. Uh, it's not a particularly windy day today but there's a bit of a breeze on top here. But there's a notice board in the village that I was reading before I came. As I say I've not really read anything about these in any books and all it does say is that they are Bronze Age and that this site is the only site on Anglesey that has more than one stone. There are lots of single standing stones. In fact, there's one not far from here, the other side of the village. But this is the only site on Anglesey that uh, has more than one single stone. So this is the only three stone monument on Anglesey. They're not really a lot taller than, than me. This one's about my height, five foot ten. That one's a bit more, it's probably six foot, six foot six probably. That one's a little bit higher. More than the stones, it's the location that strikes you. Um, we're right on the crest of a ridge, running along here, and the views are quite distant. It's quite a hilly area of the island, undulating. It's still farmland now, but uh, so you can't see miles because there's obviously hills on the horizon. But you've probably got a three mile vista, I would say, from this point. And of course the the burial chamber was just up there, probably about a quarter of a mile away. And there's another standing stone the other side of the village, which you can't see from here because the village is in a bit of a dip. Uh, but no doubt before the village was established, you could probably see to that single sanding stone as well. This is the only one with three. So it's quite significant in terms of the uh, history of Anglesey. It's quite a windswept uh, location as well and it's not particularly windy today. Uh, but there's a, a fresh breeze. Now looking sort of northwest from the stone site, and the bulk of uh, the Wilford power station is uh, the most prominent feature on the skyline. I'm sorry if this wind is uh, in the microphone. I'm trying to shield the microphone, but it's not the best of uh, cameras for <laughs> for sound quality. So that's looking towards Church Bay. You can't, you can just see the sea uh, just to the left of the power station, but it's a long way off really. We're about probably two miles inland here. But it's certainly a, a commanding position. And the modern wind farms are, are scattered across the landscape now. But at uh, when this site was occupied in the Bronze Age, I would imagine it was more or less an open vista. A lot different to how it is today. No development, no pylons, no wind turbines, just open farmland. And these were the first farmers, weren't they, uh, in, in Britain that erected these.
but it's nice to come and visit and it's nice that it's not busy uh, obviously it's too far from a road for many people to uh, come and visit I've just walked the footpath and it looks like I'm the only person that's walked that footpath for a long time 